Okay, good afternoon. So, let's start our discussion on income tax of individual taxpayers. Okay, so before we proceed with the actual computation, let's just uh, review first what is the concept of income. So, income refers to all earnings derived from service rendered either through labor or capital, business or investments, or both, including gain derived from sale or exchange of personal or real property, either ordinary or capital assets. So even though, guys, uh, your property is being uh, sold, so the profit or the gross profit will still be considered as an income, and it will be subject to tax. Okay, so we have categorized our income into five categories. First is what we call compensation income, so we will discuss that in detail later. Then we have your professional income, business income, passive income, capital gains, and the last one, fringe benefits. So all of this uh, type of income will be discussed later. Okay, so for the categories of income, so if you see on the first column, we have uh, the first column is the category of income. Then the second column is, is it subject to income tax? And the other column is, is it subject to business tax? And if not, what are taxes ng, which is applicable to that particular kind or category of income? So let's, so for compensation, so it is subject to income tax. So uh, for an ob overview lang, compensation is the income uh, earned by an individual that is employed under an employee-employer relationship. So it is subject to income tax. So, of course, that is not subject to business tax. And uh, it will be discussed later that uh, it will be subject for withholding tax. So, guys, withholding tax is just an advanced income. 
ah sorry advance tax okay so the next column or the next row I mean is what we call professional so of course it is subject to income to income tax and it will be subject to VAT or percentage if the gross sale or receipt I uh, when we talk about professional so we, we will use the right term receipt so the gross receipt will exit the 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 VAT threshold which is three million so it will it will be subject to VAT. Uh, if not, if the, it does not uh, reach the 3 million threshold, so it will be subject only to 3% percentage tax. Then, of course, it will be subject to withholding tax. As I said earlier, it is just an advanced tax payment on withholding. Okay, so next, third, we have your business income. So, of course, it is subject to income tax, and the third itself suggest that it will be also subject to business tax so mind you guys business tax will be discussed on next semester that will be the subject matter for your income tax ah, sorry for taxation too so that will be discussed um next semester but under the train law there are uh now in overlapping topics related to income taxation and business taxation when because of the provisions uh, provided by that that the train law so that's why uh, i choose to discuss uh, business tax in relation to our discussion of income tax taxation okay so of course it will be subject to an advanced tax or what we call withholding tax then the fourth one, we have your passive. We will discuss that later. So, passive income is not subject to income tax nor business tax. It will be subject to what we call final tax and it will, it will be discussed uh, as we go on, the, on this discussion. Next, we have your capital gains. So, it is not subject to income tax, although gain is considered as an income by concept, but it will not be subject to income tax nor business tax because... Uh, when you reach that particular topic, we will learn that hindi na siya subject for a business or that is not a business activity. So that's why it is not subject to business tax. So the tax applicable for your capital gains will be capital gains tax and it will, it will be discussed later. So the next one is your fringe benefits. So these are other benefits provided by your employer to his or her employee uh, in addition to the compensation provided sa iyang uh, labor or sa iyang work. So, it will be subject to income tax and will, it will be discussed later uh, on, the, as we, uh, on the succeeding slides. Okay, so next. <clears throat> compensation income. The term compensation income refers to the gain derived from labor, specifically employment such as salaries and commissions. Okay, so all remuneration for services performed by an employee for his employer under the employee-employee relationship. So please take note for the term employee-employer relationship. It does not mean, guys, that you are an, uh, you are working in a particular office or for a particular individual. Uh, you, uh, the employee-employer relationship exists. So guys, you have to consider the status of employment. If you have... Uh, uh, if you have idea or if you if you natawag nang nag subaybay sa mga current events uh, one of the mga uh, issues or topics nga favorite gid nga i, i ano sa news is ang ginatawag na end of or end of contract so end of contract or employees under a contractual uh, agreement so that is not considered as an employee-employee relationship. So in short, the income earned by those individuals under the endo or under a contract of service or job order status is considered as doing business. Okay? So it is not considered as a compensation because there is no employee-employer relationship na naga exist Because after the end of the contract period, you will be terminated or you will uh, you will be uh, you are you will not provide your service anymore after the end of your of your term or of your contract either it is monthly quarterly semi-annual or annual the contract still your uh, status is not on a regular basis so when we talk about employee employer, employer relationship so the status of the employee is a regular employee so it is uh, that particular employee 
is entitled for uh, bonuses, SSS or GSIS, in the case may be, feel health or the mandatory contributions uh, mandated or provided by law. So, those are considered uh, regular employee or uh, employees under employee-employee relationship. So, in the, it would be, if that is the case, the income earned by that particular employee will be considered as compensation income. That includes the basic salary, overtime pay, allowances, bonuses, commissions, etc. So, those will be considered in general as compensation income. Okay? So, if you recall, the table provided earlier, so we, it was uh, mentioned that compensation income is subject to income tax. So these are subject to income tax using the income tax table or graduated tax table. And it will be discussed later. Okay, so next, we have your professional or business income. So these are income arises from self-employment or practice or profession. So for tax purposes, uh, and treatment for self-employment or self-employed individual and practitioners or professionals are still are, are the same. So for tax competition purposes now. Okay. So for professional business, so these are income arises from self-employment or practice of profession. Income derived from an exercise of profession, business or utilization of capital, including profit gain derived from sale or conversion of an asset that still considers a business income. These are subject to income tax using the income tax table. And also, it will be subjected to what we call business tax, either VAT or percentage tax. If the gross receipts of that particular taxpayer under this uh, earning, this particular income or professional or business income, if it reach the VAT threshold, which is 3 million, so it will be VATable. If not, it, uh, that individual will only pay 3% percentage tax or any other percentages provided by uh, the code, okay, or the law. Next, we have your passive income. So, income in which the taxpayers merely merely waits for the amount to come in so just like your passive skills in your mobile games so you don't need to uh, activate that particular skill all you have to do is to wait for the uh, effect to be triggered. So, may mga triggering effect lang siya. But, uh, the point is, wala ka sang may ginatungok or wala ka sang may ginapush na button. All you have to do is to wait. Okay? So, the same is true with your passive income. You don't need to do something. All you have to do is to wait to for the income to come in. Sana all na. Okay. These are subjects to a separate and final tax. Take note. This income are subject to a separate and final tax. So, in short, if you have passive income, you don't need to declare this one on your income tax return. Instead, you will file this income separately and the tax that you're going to pay, to pay is considered final. Because we have two kinds of tax payments, guys. We have your final and uh, withholding. So, withholding yan, hindi pa siya final nang you are, you are allowed to use that withholding tax or your advance payment to credit or to, to lessen your tax liability uh, at the end of the year. So that would be your uh, passive income. So we will discuss this one because every kind of income, there is a particular rate uh, ng we provide some law. Okay, so next. These are, these are tax at five rate, uh, rates ranging from 5% to 25%. So examples, we have your interest and winnings. So kung legal to ang winnings ang, sa squid game, so that would be subject to final tax if the squid game is uh, held in the Philippines. So ang um, prices na ma-receive ni player number 456, 
will no longer be exactly 4.5 billion, I think. So that would be deducted with a portion percentage um, and it will be considered as a final tax on winnings. Then for your bank deposits, in uh, in ah, okay for your bank deposits of course so every quarter the bank will provide you the interest uh, interest as payment for the money again lend mo sa ila kung ipatago mo sa banko so you will be provided by the bank a uh, what we call that interest on your on your savings or time deposit and portion of it will be withheld by the bank and the bank is the one to remit the 20% final tax to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. So if your income or if your interest income from your deposit sa, sa land bank, for example, is uh, 10 pesos, so 20% of your 10 peso, which is 2 peso, will be withheld by land bank. So uh, ang masulod lang sa inyong mga bank deposit is only 8 pesos. So the top pesos will be considered as a final tax and it will be deducted from your 10 peso income, interest income. Then the land bank is the one to remit your 2 peso sa Bureau of Internal Revenue. So that is the mechanism of what we call final tax. Okay? So kung may mga interest income ka and you are a business owner or uh, negosyante ka guys, you don't need to declare your uh, interest income earned from land bank sa iyong mga income tax return because according to the second description, uh, it, you should separate, uh, you should file a separate final tax return. Actually, you don't need to file. Uh, ang naghatag sa iyong mga uh, income is the one to file and pay the final tax. Sila na mabayad. So, all you have to do is wala again. Nang, all you have to do is to receive lang the net, the net of your interest income or any other passive income. So we have your royalties, then dividends. Dividends, uh, for example, kung may mga dividend declaration ng corporation and you are the stock, one of the stockholders. So you have the amount of money I expect mo as dividend is net of tax because the corporation will withheld a portion of your dividend and the the uh, corporate source of your dividend or the corporation nga mahatag sa dividend is the one to remit to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Then, same with two with prices. So, mga loto, fact prices na ang mga ginapang provide ng mga prices sa uh, mga rockles, ang gambal sila tax-free but that is not actually tax-free. What they say is, is, is sorry, ng uh, Ang ginag-advertise nila nga price is the net of tax na, net of final tax. So, para mabal sila nga tax-free ko, no? So, kung sila yung tax-free, sila nagbayad sa tax. Ang in-declare nila nga price is net of tax na. So, interest, royalties, prices, winnings, dividends, and any other uh, income which the taxpayer merely waits to receive or to come in are all passive income, then they are all subject to passive final tax on passive income on which the rate is 5% up to 25% as the case may be. So, depende na sa kung ano ang type of income. So, the rate is, all, all re, is also the, is going to be discussed in this uh, chapter. Okay. So, next we have your capital gains. So, an income derived from sale of asset not used in trade or business. Okay sale of asset. So if you have lot, if you have building and that particular building is not using your business or that is not the main product of your business, so uh, the income derived from the sale of that capital asset will be considered as capital gains and it will be subject to what we call capital gains tax. This is also a separate return. Okay? So if you have earned income or gains out from sale of your asset, that gain is not declared on your income tax return. So, you have to declare it separately. So, may, may, may toggling on siyang return. Okay, so I think that's 1704, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so capital gains on shares of, shares of stocks that are, that's a, that are that's 
only the example, just an example, then we have your capital gains on sale of real property. Sorry for the typo error. So, capital gains on sale of real properties. Okay? So, we have your fringe benefits. Okay. So, any good or service or other benefits furnished or granted by an employer in, a, in cash or in kind, in addition to basic salaries to an individual or employee, except rock and file, under the employee-employee relationship. So, when we talk about fringe benefit, this is additional benefits provided to the employee by the employer. So, mga excessive na niya, guys, ng mga benefits. Like, for example, if your employer will provide you or will give you car, will give you free accommodation sa quarter, may pay saron ka da, libre lang ang tool, ah, libre ang lang ang inyong mga, 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 ano, mga, mga lodging sa, sa, sa balay na yung provide sa company, especially sa mga milling companies, ang, may mga balay na daang yung pang-provide ang milling company sa mga empleyado nila. So, that would be considered as fringe benefits. So, if we're going to apply strictly the law on fringe benefits tax, so, that dapat uh, bayaran na sa company ang mga benefits or services na provide nila sa ilang mga employee in excess or uh, in addition to their uh, regular benefits. Okay? So, mga ano na siya. Like, gagaan ka mo playing ticket para sa, sa mga ano nyo, mga business trips. Like, gagaan ka car, personal car, then housing lot, something. So, those, those were considered as fringe benefits and taxable na siya under our law. Okay, so, next, we will discuss what we call the graduated income tax rate for individual taxpayers. So, this rate is provided by the, uh, the so-called train law. So, if you're going to research on the graduated sales on uh, before the implementation of train law, so, makita mo din ang difference, guys, na nubo ang tax rates. Sa nga ito nga, no? sorry, wala ko na, naka, wala ko nakabutang sa slide to compare the, the difference between uh, rates applicable in 2021 because of train law and the rates uh, bef uh, before the implementation of train law. But, if you have time, you can uh, search and compare para makita nyo yung difference sa mga rates. So, nagnaaw nyo guys. Ang now ang threshold. So, how to interpret your, how to interpret your, what we call graduated income tax rate. So, this graduated income tax rate is only applicable for individual taxpayers. So, corporations, uh, one person corporation or OPCs, and uh, uh, yes, and, and OPCs, hindi niya applicable sa ila because corporations including o, including OPCs is subject to a fixed rate of 30%. Okay? So, for individual, yeah, it is graduated. So, as the tax base increases, the tax rate also increases. Okay? So, how to interpret or, or how to use this graduated income tax rate table? First, you have to identify your taxable income. Let's say if your taxable income is uh, 200,000, so of course you are on the first. Uh, I don't. Wala din ba? Uh, bye bye. Okay, so if your taxable income is 200,000, so you will fall on the first row. Okay? If your taxable income is butangta is 5 million pesos, so you will be on the second to the last in a row. So, since 5 million siya, according to the graduated table, over 2 million taxable income is has a tax of 490 pesos. 490,000 pesos for the 2 million alone, okay? Since your in taxable income is 5 million, so in short, 5 million plus, sorry, 5 million minus 2 million will give us 3 million. So your 3 million, which is the excess over 
the 2 million will be subject to 32%. So, 3 million multiplied by 32%. So, the answer would so the answer would give uh, would be added to the uh, fixed nga tax which is 419,000. So bilang siya. So 2 million multiply by 32% so that gives us 640,000 plus the tax for the first 2 million which is 490,000 so the tax uh, the, the taxpayer will going to pay for his taxable income in the, in the amount of 5 million will be 1,130,000 okay so actually I have a illustrative problem regarding how to use the graduated income tax rate for individual taxpayers okay so let's continue next Okay, sample problem. So, may jogging, ay natalangin, pagamay ko lang ang uh, graduated income tax rate. So, the grad sample problem would be, so, ara uh, naging, ging, ano pala siya, ging minimize gamay, kaya para kayo ang problem. Okay, so the problem is, Mr. Hylos, a resident citizen, had a taxable compensation income from an employer employee relationship. So, the income of Mr. Hylos is purely earned from, from, from labor or from employment. So, that the nail or the category of his income is compensation income. Then, it is already mentioned in the problem that uh, the 920,750 is already taxable compensation income. So, how much was the income tax of Mr. Hylos? Okay, so first let's identify on what uh, criteria or uh, schedule uh, na belong ang income ni Mr. Hylos. So that is 900, 920, so that is 920,750. So that will fall on the third row of, or third bracket. Okay, third bracket. Since over 400, but not over 800,000. Okay? So, in short, the first 800,000 of the taxable income earned by high loss uh, will be subject to 30,000. And the remaining, uh, the remaining taxable income in excess of 800,000, that would be 120,750 will be subject to an additional tax of 25%. Okay, so that would, the answer would be, first, the taxable income is 800 because that is provided in the schedule. Ano siya, oh? Ano siya, oh? Ano siya? 800,000. So that would be the first nga bracket, yeah, 800,000. Then, this 800,000 under the tax table has an, a tax of 30,000. Ay, sorry. 800,000, so the tax would be 130,000. Okay? So, for 800, for 800, the tax is 130. Then, the excess of 800. 30, which is 920,750 pesos less the bracket of 800,000 8, 800, pesos rather. So that gives us a difference of 120,750. So what you have to do next is to multiply it by the additional tax rate provided by the bracket or provided by the tax table. So that is 30%. The additional bracket mo. So plus 30% can of the excess of 800. So the excess of 800 would be 120,750 multiplied by 30%. That gives us 36,225. So the total tax of Mr. Hylos for his taxable income in the amount of 900. 20,750 would be 130 plus 36,225 for a total of 166,225. Okay? 
So that is how you interpret or how you use your uh, tax table. Uh, please bear in mind that you have to make sure that the, the, ta ta that the tax base would be taxable income. Look for the word taxable income, okay? Because that is the tax base in computing our income tax using the tax table. Okay, so I hope that uh, everybody understands. Uh, we will uh, provide some additional notes and uh, practice problem after this, uh, after this discussion. Okay, let's proceed for the meantime. So for self-employed individual taxpayers, <coughs> uh, you can be a self-employed either in either by business or being a sole proprietor. So sole proprietor, guys, please take note. If you hope to be uh, registered as a one-person corporation, so you this topic is not applicable for what OPCs. Okay. So, individual taxpayers who are engaged in business activity, either in selling of goods or services, then one is practice of profession. So, for individual practitioner or is a uh, sole practitioner, so this is uh, the topic para sa iya. <coughs> Excuse me. For for general professional partnership. Ang money ang computation naton, dili man ni para sa iya. But take note lang, they have to share first the sh the income of of uh, the general professional partnership. Then after receiving sa share nila sa income sa general professional partnership, that's the time they will compute their own separate income tax. Okay? using this uh using the topic that we're going to discuss in this chapter okay so this is an individual taxpayers who are not employed and in public practice of their profession as lawyers accountants engineers dentists and etc okay so for uh, for the purpose of uh, compute, computing the income tax return for self-employed individual taxpayer, let's first identify the term uh, used in the computation. What are the definitions of gross sales and gross receipts? So gross sale pertains to the total sales transaction net of value added tax. So tax guys will is, uh, is an example of business taxes. So, it will be discussed thoroughly in your tax too. But for the meantime, as long para lang may idea ka mo guys, uh, when, if the business is uh, reach the VAT threshold or ang uh, ginatawag na, na VATable na ang aton niya business, so every transaction sa aton niya business will be subject to VAT. So, in short, kung may sale ka nga 1 million, you have to multiply it by 12%. So, the amount na ibaligya mo sa yung mga mga clients or sa yung mga, uh, mga mga buyers will be 1 million plus 12%. So, that is 1 million 120,000. Okay? So, if you are batapon. So, when we talk about gross sale, you have to exclude the 120,000. So, in short, in my previous example, all you have to do is just uh, ang amount na you consider which is just the 1 million peso. So you have to exclude your 120 as as VAT. Kakason mo na siya when we talk about gross sales. Okay? Gross sales subject to 8% income tax rate option will be net of sales, sales returns and discounts. So guys, under the train law bago subong, uh, taxpayers has the option to uh, select what we call 8% income tax rate and will, it will be discussed under this uh, chapter. So, we discuss na nato ng 8% income tax rate option. But for the meantime, uh, the tax base for the income tax for that 8% income tax rate option will be gross sales net of sales return and discount. Okay? Okay, for gross receipt, Gross receipt refers to the amount of money or its equivalent representing the contract price, compensation, so for uh, for job orders or for employee uh, for individuals who are under the 
contract of service or mga ginatawag natin yung mga job order or mga endo. So, ang tanan nila nga mabaton nga na payment from their uh, uh, employer or I think I'm not going to use the word employer because wala na isang employee-employer relationship. Ang mabato nila ng amount from their uh, contracting for the from the contracting party yung nag-contract sa nilang services. So that would be the contract price or what we call gross receipts um, siya. Okay? So actually the term compensation is no longer applicable under this right. So can you kay we we can just ignore this one. So se service fee, rental or royalty. So in short guys, ang gross receipts is ang tawag sa income sa mga service providers, okay? So gross sales and gross receipts are almost the same except lang for the nature of the uh, services or nature of business sang sina ang mga taxpayer. So, including, Roya, including the amount charged for material supplies and services and deposits and advance payment actually or constructively or when we say constructively, mga ano siya guys, mga accounts receivable. Okay? So, accounting method, they apply. And when we talk about uh, taxation, so, gina consider dun siya. Received during the taxable period for the services performed for another person, exact returnable security deposit, so that's exclude the returnable security deposit because that is not an income. When you say returnable, the, that is considered as a receivable on the other party and reliability on the other party. So, kakasal mo na guys, ang, yeah, hindi na siya form part when we talk about gross receipts ang mga returnable security deposit. So, in case of VAT taxpayers, so the same with your, with your gross sales, you have to exclude the VAT component of your receipts, okay? When we talk about gross receipts, so it is a common knowledge that VAT is not part of your sales or VAT is not part of your receipt. But that would be discussed in detail in, in your tax too. Pero common knowledge na sa, you know, when we talk about income, sales, or receipts, it is always VAT exclusive or net of VAT, kwa o ng VAT, kaso ng VAT, i-exclude ang VAT. Okay? So, so much for that. Let's proceed. For the pro forma computation, so yeah, I have to limit this discussion for one hour lang, kaya hindi mo tama kagugat. So, we will uh, continue na lang after uh, next meeting para sa next na discussion. For the sake of this discussion, we have to limit for one hour only. So, pro forma computation. Okay? So, the pro forma computation. So, first, uh, we have to consider two options. So, no overview, let me guys. We will discuss this more on chapter 5. So, the pro forma computation for two options, we have your itemized deduction. And the other one is optional standard deduction. So, under our tax laws, allowed ang mag-deduct. So, natawag na? OSD or what we call optional standard deduction. So let's first discuss the performa computation for itemized deduction. So when we talk about itemized deduction, it's like a uh, it's like the same with your accounting subjects when we talk about income statement. So my my income, then my expenses, then my net income after, di ba? So, actual na mga expenses, na sa mga expenses from, all, from our business operation, in our accounting 1, 2, 3, and so on, ng mga accounting subjects. Okay? So, in line na siya, in line siya sa mga accounting discussion, uh, accounting performance na to, specifically in uh, format of our income statement. So, that is when we use your term itemized deduction. So, let's uh, review. What are the pro forma computation? First, we have to consider or uh, identify your gross sales or slash gross receipt. If your business is a service-oriented service business, so the term is gross receipt. If your business is uh, a trading or a manufacturing concern, so the term would be gross sales. Okay? So, less uh, cost of sales for trading than direct cost of services for service provider. So, we can arrive at your gross income or gross income from services. In our accounting, sometimes we use the term gross profit for, for, uh, no, for manufacturing, okay? 
for manufacturing, we use the term gross profit. Okay? Next, after identifying your gross income or gross income from services in case of a service provider, you have to identify your expenses of operation. Okay? Actually, guys, this one, your cost of sales, direct cost of services, then expenses of operation and indirect cost of services are all referred as itemized deduction because being item mo, being isa-isa mo, you are identifying your specific deduction. So that's why it is termed as itemized deduction. On the other hand, for optional standard deduction, if you notice, ang first lang na column is a row, I mean, is gross sale or gross receipt. The same on the first column. Then, other gross receipts. The same, my guys, may hari mo na digado. Ayaw, may gross income siya, oh. Sa may itemized deduction, i-add lang sa sababaw. Then, after, uh, after summarizing all your gross sales or in gross receipts from other sources, from other business activities, then you can identify your total total sales or total receipts as the case may be then you have to deduct your OSD automatically kita na okay so we can we can uh, summarize the discussion on OSD as what we call sometimes in our during our college we term this as 60% because ang mabiling ang imo taxable is equal to 60% na eh kaya tungod sa OSD na 40% so 100% your gross sales or gross receipts is equivalent to 100%. Then your OSD is 40%. So, of course, uh, simple math will tell you that your taxable income will is equivalent to 60% of your gross sales. That's why uh, when we talk about OSD, always in ang inadundaman is ang 60% ruling. Ang taxable income is 60%. Para dasi guys, ng pag-compute, we don't need to identify the OSD anymore. All you have to do is to uh, to account all the gross sales and gross receipts, multiply by 60%, and voila, that is your taxable income. Okay? So, going back in our discussion, so, ging, ano ko lang, ipakita ko lang sa inyo kung ano ang difference nila, ang difference nila, nila ng portion. So, instead of expenses of operation, indirect cost, and cost of sales, and direct cost of services, uh, as itemized deduction for always di wala na that is already 40% eh regardless kung ano gilang tutuod mga expenses you will uh, you will adopt the 40% as a standard deduction right so next let's continue on item A so after deducting your expenses natural in our income statement we will term that as net income sometimes sila term na siya as net income before tax di ba Net income before tax. May mga mga panatang na term in our accounting. So, for this proforma computation, we will just call it as net income. Or net income from services if you are a service provider. Okay? Then, you have to add your gross income others. So, tanan yung mga taxable gross income should be included ang mga non-operating in our accounting term mga non-operating income so we have to include that in our net income then we have to deduct the expenses related to that particular income then we can now arrive at the net income which is subject to what we call income tax at graduated rates when we talk about graduated rates ang itong discuss natin bago lang itong may table identify mo the income bracket though so that would be your graduated income tax rate since you have already have your taxable income so you can you can proceed now to the computation of your income tax this is a simplified version because before the tax reform and acceleration law or what we call the train law may mga exemptions pa na din na grant sa mga individual taxpayers may mga exemption but during the implementation of train law, naging kakas na itong mga exemptions. Wala na din exemptions. So, kung magkasimpli na lang gig, kung anong din to in our accounting, ang muna na siya nga ito niya, computation sa, ano yun eh, sa taxation. So, guys, uh, since this is just chapter 2, uh, we, we are going to discuss what are 
income, subject, or considered as gross sales. So, we will uh, zoom in kung ano na yung mga figures ang nag-comprise ng XXX niyo, kung ano nga mga item na i-consider na as gross sales. Ano nga mga expenses ang pwede na itong mag-duck as cost of sales? Then, ang pinaka-importante sa tanan, what are the allowed expenses sa Bureau of Internal Revenue? Because, if uh, the hour law will not provide some limitations on the expenses of operation, try to imagine pwede gid ma-minimize ang atong nga tax payment because pwede ta ni siya i-abuse ang expenses of operation. So pwede ta na pamutang, pang-invento, pang mo sa mga expenses nga pwede lang ma-deduct na to in order nga magamay ang ato nga taxable income then eventually our income tax will also uh, decreases because it's uh, it is just the rate ang ginamultiply sa ato nga taxable income. That's why under chapter 5, I think, we will discuss this portion in detail. Are? I-discuss na niya in detail. Okay? I-discuss na niya in detail ang expenses from operation. Okay? Chapter 4 will be, uh, fo will focus on gross income. So, gross income and inclusion. So, dito, ang muna naman yung chapter 4 na ito. Chapter 5 is detailed discussion on expenses. Okay? So, uh, let's uh, go back to what we call optional standard deduction. So, after guys deducting, deducting your 40%, now we can arrive at your taxable income. Then, the taxable income will be the basis in computing your income tax rate. Your income tax, I mean, using the scheduler or graduated income tax table for individual taxpayers, which was already discussed earlier. Okay? So, simple note lang, uh, before we end our discussion, the income tax will depend on the gross sales or gross receipts, gross sales or gross receipts plus non-operating plus non-operating plus non-operating income. So, your tax will depend sa sendre. Why? Because we have what we call VAT threshold rule. Okay? So, your VAT threshold rule will be gross sales or gross receipts that exceeds 3 million will be considered VATable. So, VATable yan na kung mag-exceed ka 3 million. Ang are. If your gross sales and gross receipts plus your non-operating income will exceed 3 million and you will be considered as a VAT taxpayer. Okay? And everything will change once you are considered as a VAT taxpayer. Because in a business activity, guys, in a business setup, there are only two options pa no ka how on, on your status, on your on your business tax. One, if you are subject to percentage tax and and the, and the last one, you will be subject or you will be considered as a VAT taxpayer. So, either lang na sa dua, either percentage ka or VATable ka. But actually, this topic will focus or will be the subject matter of your tax 2. Tax 2 na na siya. Galing, uh, there are some uh, provisions or rule attach on how to compute your income tax based on your business tax uh, qualification kung batable ka or non batable so may mga muna na siya under trade law so we will discuss more on this topic next um, next uh, discussion or next meeting na so see you on the next discussion or video